video, we are going to cover computer security. Now, in computer security, there's a couple things that you guys might already know, but you might not, and how to keep your computer and your files safe. Now, the first kind of thing we're going to talk about is something called a dictionary attack, and this has to do with your passwords. When you're creating a password, some sites make you do, you know, a special character here and more than one number, but non sequentially, and you know, like you have to have an extra letter that doesn't, I mean, they're, they can be really, really specific on how complicated they have to be. And it's actually a little bit unnecessary. The kind of attacks they're trying to guard you from are these dictionary attacks, which literally, there are computers that are programmed to go down all of the words in the dictionary and try them as passwords for every username in a system, for example. So if your password is kangaroo, they're probably going to break into your account. Now, most people's passwords are not this simple, but that doesn't matter. They're trying to mass attack everybody's account with this type of strategy, and all they need is one or two people or one or two percent of the people to have these simpler passwords that are just a word or numbers that are in order. Now, in general, when you're creating a password, you want to have some capitals, some numbers, some symbols, sure, but one of the best ways you can mix it up is just to throw some random letters in there to really make sure that it's not a word that they're going to find in a dictionary. It's not a common name, nothing that's too sequential, if you will. Now, phishing is have you ever gotten one of those emails that's from like Amazon or they say you're for, they're from Visa and they need you to log in and fix something right now or else you're going to lose your account and you're going to be fined and you know they come up with all these great reasons why you need to log in right now and they provide you the link. Phishing is something that generally targets the older population that doesn't know necessarily the difference between an actual Amazon.com and what looks to be Amazon.com. There are two ways to safeguard yourself from phishing. One, look at the address in the browser. If it says Amazon.com, you're probably safe. It also should have an HTTPS, the little green thing next to it, to ensure that it is actually Amazon. Another way to do it is to just exit that email, open another browser, go to Amazon.com, and see if there's any alerts there. Most likely there won't be unless it's obviously a real threat. Encryption and HTTPS. Now, if you're at your bank or you're on your website for your bank, maybe you're doing it from a public place, maybe you're at Starbucks and you're in the Wi-Fi and you need to check your bank, you might be worried about your password security, and you should be. Uh, anything that's sent along these packets might be intercepted by someone else. What you want to look for is the HTTPS, because that means that the site you're sending the information to is encrypting your information. Encryption is just a scrambling up of all the data, uh, and unless you have the code to unlock the encryption, it's just googly arc, just means nothing. In general, whenever you're showing private or sensitive information, you want to check for an HTTPS to make sure your information is as safe as it can be. I have a quick addendum about HTTPS. While HTTPS will protect you from people outside of your network, if there's anybody on your network who like is connected to your Wi-Fi or maybe wire with a wire connected to your internet connection, HTTPS doesn't protect you from anybody there. So you still want to be careful when you're on public Wi-Fi connections. Um, a couple other general tips. Don't share passwords between important accounts. Uh, say your password is a very strong password, but if, for example, target.com gets hacked into and that password there is the same password you have for your bank and your email, you might be kind of out of luck. Um, also, don't download strange files. A lot of these kind of Trojan or malware or viruses that happen are in files you need to download. They disguise them as well as they can, but if you're, it's not from a trusted site, uh, you want to check for that .pdf or .txt or .jpeg. Uh, if you don't recognize that or it's not, if you think you're downloading an image and it's not an image file format, don't download it. It's, that's too fishy. And once they're in there, they can pretty much run your computer uh, from the inside. So it's pretty scary stuff. Um, another way to keep yourself protected is keep your software updated, specifically software that uses the internet and interfaces with the internet. Um, one way that the bad guys are trying to get into your computer is finding holes and gaps in security of older versions. Now those bugs have been patched in new versions, so if you continuously update your security and update your software, you're not going to have as many problems. Uh, 
So these are really just like basic things, basic things you should know about how to keep your information safe on your computer.